Welcome to another week of videos. Now, um, today we're going to talk about qualitative over quantitative, right? So again, my name is Warren Howe. Hopefully you're having a great day out there and um, let's get to it. So this topic is very interesting because um, a member actually asked me a question right in our group and uh, I was going through Lemonade in a live stream and, you know, I was, as usual, I go through the qualitative first and then the quants then only the valuation, determine a buy plan. That's my modus operandi, right? So, you know, you don't have to follow that. Investors who are serious in the game know why I do that. And uh, we all have our preferences in terms of which one comes first. Yeah? So there's no right or wrong in this, but this is a very interesting topic because the question I got asked was, hey, Warren, hey, coach, you know, uh, if let's say Lemonade, you know, a company like Lemonade, which is an insurance company in the U.S., uh, what happens? What if you found out that the losses are actually increasing, right? Increasing losses. Would you stop and, you know, stop your research after knowing that the quant, right? After knowing that the financials are not exactly that attractive to you, right? So that's a great question. I mean, a lot of people, and I, this is me seven, eight years ago. I depended on, you know, all financials, right? I looked at the numbers. I looked at the debt. I looked at, you know, negative earnings, then it's a no-no, right? Gone. I'm out. So, but it doesn't work that way, right? As investors, there's so much more than the numbers, right? It's your, you know, your analysis of the qualitative that actually determines how strong this company is, where is it going to go? Now, an example, a perfect example of that will be whether or not this company has a huge product market fit. Now, we always talked about this, right? And I don't mind repeating it. Huge product market fit, meaning that, are, you know, new ways of consumption. Are they catering to, you know, the new target market? Are they good at, you know, achieving market share on that particular aspect? For example, millennials, Gen Y, Gen Z, Gen Z2, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, what is the, like, Lemonade, what are, is, are they solving a huge enough problem that is big enough and is actually, you know, making sense to disrupt the traditional ways of uh, buying insurance, right? And I, I mean, I've been looking at, we don't have time enough for this video to actually talk about the, you know, Lemonade's uh, uh, qualitatives, but th this is really exciting. So in every week we go through stocks, right? We go through stocks, every company, and we research from scratch, A to Z. Now I did my qualitative analysis on Lemonade and I'm, I'm loving what I see so far, right? Because as, you know, as a, uh, uh, as someone buying insurance, I, I see myself, uh, there's a lot, there are tons of inefficiencies back in Malaysia uh, from, you know, the whole process, the whole user flow where, you know, insurance agents come to you and say, hey, you want to buy this? Now that's like a negative vibe. I get a negative vibe because someone's selling me something. That's number one. Number two is that we are not educated enough on what is insurance. So if, you know, Lemony can actually tackle that barrier, which I'm pretty sure a lot of countries are actually having the same problem, uh, then this will have a huge product market fit. So why is that, you know, why is huge product market fit more important? Why are they solving, you know, if they're solving a huge enough problem that can break the barrier and get more market share, which makes sense other compared to legacy insurance. Now, will, wouldn't that be better and wouldn't that increase organic growth, right? Organic marketing. Uh, it, when it comes to word of mouth, when it comes to organic sales, when it comes to, you know, lowering cost of acquisitions, right? They do not have to spend every dollar on that. So why am I telling you guys this is because sometimes the numbers don't mean jack, right? Don't mean jack shit. So, um, and that's a great question. I mean, you, you can be the numbers person, right? You can be the numbers guy and you say, oh, you know what? I, I'm out, right? Negative 122. So this is the 10K of Lemonade. And this is 122 negative, right? Net income. Why should I be, you know, investing in a losing money company? But then again, this, this brings back the question, right? If we depend on the numbers so much, we would miss out on the Amazons, the PayPals, the Squares, the Teslas, right? And the list goes on because that's not how it works, right? The a, gr a good growth company driven by a good management, driven by quality management, right? A quality team takes time to realize, right? Quali they are qual they're quantitatives, right? The, it, te it takes time for the numbers to actually realize how good the company is. So this is why qualitative over quantitative. That's my opinion, right? So when I look at Lemonade, I look at, you know, and we talk about this all the time, you know, from rate revenue breakdown, how are they earning money? Is it, are they spending a lot on expenses? Is it going down? 
Is there, you know, good revenue growth? Now, I'm not trying to say that Lemonade is a sexy company in terms of good financials. I'm trying to say, give them a chance. I'm trying to say, look at the qualitatives, right? More than the quantitatives. Because if the, one look at the numbers and you say, oh, you know what? 122 mil, I'm, I'm not investing in the company. That's okay. But we're not really ho- f- looking at the whole company holistically, right? So I hope you got some value out of this today. And uh, remember, qualitatives first which is more than quantitative because that is essentially what's driving the company. And who knows, right, in terms of Lemonade, uh, when, when they reach out to uh, a, a few number of people that really make a difference or when the market picks up to say, hey, shit, this is like, this is like a no-brainer, right? This is a no-brainer product. It's cheaper than legacy you know, insurance companies. It makes sense. It's faster in claims. Uh, they're doing the right thing, right? They're member-centric. Who knows, right? That that growth could be 100% in a year because of that breakout, right? So what is that inflection point? We got to assess all of this before we actually determine a buy or a sell. So again, I hope you guys got some value out of this today. I'm Warren Howe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.